Hello there guys and welcome to uh, day two of the transfer target on my channel. You all absolutely love transfers, don't you? The comments yesterday on that video and the number of subscribers. Thank you. Genuinely thank you. I'm going to keep this up because you all seem to absolutely love this trend. And what I say as well, what a nice bunch of people you all are. <laughs> the comments, me and Nicola, we sat reading them last night and you're just so sweet. A lot of you are really supportive and really appreciative. And I genuinely appreciate that. So thank you. Thank you for being very kind. Thank you for enjoying the content. And thank you for giving the big thumbs up. And also, if you're new here, once again, if you want to see more of these transfer targets, subscribe. Please do subscribe. As you can see by the fancy graphic I've made rolling beneath me, this is what's coming up on today's transfer target. We've got a load of players in and out to discuss. And we've got a little bit of news before that as well. But yeah, as I'm saying, if you're new here and you want Man City news, academy stuff, transfers and all that kind of stuff, subscribe because... What else are you going to do over the summer? It's pretty obvious, if you ask me. But before we get into all the uh, transfer stuff, um, a few little bits of information popped up today. Apparently, Yaya is going to sign a new contract for one year, and I think that's probably the right move. Hopefully, he will do. If he was notable by his absence in the released free transfer players, he was obviously going to be more important than that, and I'm hoping that he will stay. We'll see more of that develop. Not enough for a transfer target piece, just enough for a quick comment. Fingers crossed that's actually true. That's come from the Times. And also, David Silva has been named our player of the season. I think he fully deserves that for being absolutely beautiful absolutely magnificent and reinventing his game as a number eight this season under Guardiola. He's been better than any of us could have predicted in this new role. He's working hard and never. He's leading more from the front and he knows he's going to be a big part of City's future for the next two or three years. I don't think any of us would have saw that coming when he looked like he was full of injuries and niggles last season but He's back to his very best and he fully well deserves his first ever Man City play of the year. And there's also this picture somewhere on the screen that's leaked on the new kit of Gabriel Jesus and David Silva wearing it. And he looks all right. It's this white shorts. I'll take that. It's a lot nicer than uh, this season's or last season's, depending how you view it, if it's finished or not. It's a lot nicer than that kind of thing. It's another night template. At least we aren't coverage of City for one season. So more of that now, please. You're going to be boring and generic. At least be boring and generic and get it right. But on to the actual transfers. I'm going to start with something we even covered yesterday. It's going to be Edison because that looks more or less done already. Apparently, according to Obola, a huge Portuguese news outlet, he's already flown over to Manchester to finalise deals. I don't know if that's actually true or not. None of us actually do. But it looks very, very likely that we're upping up our intensity to sign him. Apparently, he was waving goodbye last night after the Portuguese final, his final farewell. And even he said to the press, it's likely that he'll be his last ever game. The manager, Paul uh, Benfica, did say that if he's going to leave, he's fulfilled his duty as a Benfica player and they will hold him in their hearts forever. So they see him as expendable now. It could be, apparently, according to some papers, a world record fee for a goalkeeper beating Buffon's fee all those years ago. That was a long time ago. Around 35 million. Some saying 45, but I think it's closer to 35. This would be a great signing. Apparently, he has it all. As I said previously in the video yesterday, I've got a video here. Go and watch that about more details about Edison. But this one looks like like it'll be over the line very, very soon. It looks like we'll have a, a new number one. An erratic, fun, powerful, vibrant goalkeeper by the looks of it. One with a whole broadened skill set, lots of ability, and one that could be our number one for a very long time. Another new name popped up yesterday, actually, and it's another from Portugal and from Sporting in particular, Carvalho, William Carvalho. Um, he's been linked. Now, I don't know how much is this true, but it's come from Gonzalo Lopez, who's a very reliable Portuguese journalist. He said that City are in discussions, and I wonder if it's some kind of countermeasure to Fabinho's party, because it looks like those two are options there. I know a lot of people aren't a fan of Carvalho, and I think I've seen a lot of it criticism online since this news broke what i will say in general is don't judge a player by one 20 second clip on twitter that is naive and terrible i'm sure you could find a moment like that for even yaya Torre. yaya Torre wasn't running last season he's been running this year under pep so if we do cycle value that little clip that's going around where he looks lazy that won't be happening that won't be happening at all. He will be running a lot more. Carvalho had his kind of peak a couple of years back where he was excellent for sporting. And his uh, stock rose absolutely hugely. And he almost priced himself out of a move to many teams. And since then, I think it's fair to say he stagnated a little bit. But on his day, he can be absolutely excellent. A deep-lying regista. Uh, to coin the football Twitter term, the hipster term, so to speak. He's comfortable on the ball. He hasn't got the most pace in the world, but he's very comfortable passing it around. He's obviously absolutely huge as well. And um, He's still very young. He's still got a lot of potential, a lot of time, so maybe uh, fill out and be the player that he can be. Whether that happen or not, whether he will get there, I don't know. I know he's not the biggest, most popular player that we've been linked to so far, but you have to trust if Pep sees something in a the player, then maybe it's worth considering. I don't know if this will happen or not. I don't know if it's just press stuff. I don't know if it's a lazy link because Pep's brother is his agent. 
Um, but we'll see, I guess. But that is a new name there, and we'll have to see how that one goes. It could be that we're just calling Fabinho's camp's bluff there on that one. The third one on the ins, and there will be an out section as well coming up soon, so do hang around on that one. On the in section is Kyle Walker. Uh, a lot of people are saying that he should be done pretty soon. As far as I know, we may take a little bit of time. It is Spurs that we're dealing with here. He's only just finished on Spurs' postseason tour as well. Apparently, he does want to come to City. Apparently, he favours a move to the north because of his hometown of Sheffield being nearby, but a lot of clubs do want Kyle Walker, and I can see why. I'm not the world's biggest fan of Kyle Walker, but what I do acknowledge is that he's vastly better than anything we've got so far this season in terms of Zabaleta, Sanya, the old players with a lack of pace and energy. I love them both in different ways but they're not what Kyle Walker is now arguably the most consistent right back in the league. His stock has risen exponentially in the past 18 months. He's done very well under Pochettino. He's still only a decent age but he will cost an arm and a Spurs leg because Daniel Levy it drives a hard bargain as we all know. So if we're going to sign him and I think we are probably favourites I think we might have to wait a little bit. I think it's going to take a while to get over the line because English players, they don't come easily. They don't come quickly either. We're going to be going on for a long time, I think, for this. Hopefully, it won't take all summer, but don't be surprised either. And on to the outs. And did you like that little transition there to this side? So that's good, wasn't it? Anyway, Nelito is the first alleged out. I don't know where he's going to go. There is rumours linking him to Sevilla, amongst other teams, but he's been quite vocal against Pep and against City so far in the press today. Let me read this quote here. He said, um, I'm crazy about returning to Spain. Uh, they keep signing plays. Let's see the let me leave early. I was playing a lot of games uh, for the first one, but then after Christmas, something happened and I don't know why I didn't get many games. It probably is because you kept headbutting people in the Lito. And it's probably because of a certain German guy called Leroy Sane who's a little bit better than you. I like Nolito, he's a good player, he's got a good attitude in terms of the pitch, he works very hard, but I think it was always obvious that he was a stopgap signing for this team, for this squad in general, to add a little bit more variance out wide. Um, he was a little bit bargain at the time, it's not quite worked out, and I think he's been eclipsed already, and then Bernardo Silva will take more kind of game time in that attacking wide role as well. So Nolito, he probably should leave, and it probably should be with our blessing in general. Maybe he's had a full length of pep, I don't know. He seems quite combustious, and we'd all know. But if he goes, I wouldn't be surprised, let's be honest. And another that might be going, according to some people, depending on who you believe, is Kelechi Iheanacho. I would be devastated to see Kelechi go because I still rate him absolutely, hugely highly. I think the one thing Kelechi hasn't had at any real kind of stage of his career so far is concerted game time. With the likes of Sane, Gabriel Jesus, even Sterling, even Bernardo Silva, when they were younger, were getting regular game time. Kelechi's been sat on the bench. His pedigree... When he came to City, he was ridiculously high. The golden boy of the World Cup of the under-17s. And in general, one of the most highly rated young footballers of his age. And he's proven with his goals and assists. And when he does get a game of football, that he knows how to score. He knows how to assist. And I think there's more to come from him yet. If he does leave, it would personally be with my blessing. I hate to see someone like him with his ability go to waste. But apparently City have put a £25 million, uh, fee on him if he is to go. And that's probably fair, given what he brings to the table. I think he'll probably stay even being totally honest. But... I do want to see him use more because I don't think we've seen anything near what he could be yet. We need to give him a run of games. He needs to get it somewhere. It might not be a city. But if he got a run of games for somewhere and he was number one, then number nine striker, and then I think he would improve a lot. I think his confidence would come. He wouldn't be so eager to impress. I think he wouldn't overdo it. Wouldn't get a little bit carried away with his touches, which I think is the main problem he has, that he tries too hard when he comes on. And if he could grow uh, in confidence as a, as a focal point of attack, I think he could score a lot of goals. But for now... I can see him staying. I might be wrong, but I can't see anyone stepping up 25 million. But if they do, they're probably going to get a good goal scorer. Hopefully, if that happens, we put in a decent buyback clause of around 35 to 40 million, which may sound a lot, but given these days, that's probably nothing at all. And the final out is another young lad, Tosin Adarabayo. The Times are reporting that he hasn't yet signed the contract and he's rumoured to be leaving at the end of June. This uh, can it was against what uh, Sam Lee from Goal said where he said he has signed a new deal and he will be staying. I think maybe the truth is somewhere. Maybe his intention was to sign it. Maybe he has signed it. Maybe the times are wrong. Who knows? But if Tossing goes, I will be gutted and also happy for him at the same time. I know it sounds weird to say, but I do want to see him get football somewhere. What I've seen prove to us all what we know. What I see, a player that maybe leaves and becomes as good as we know they can be to maybe spark a bit of reaction from City because I think we're ignoring some of these lads for far too long at times. So if it takes one that got away to be really good, to prove a point, then kind of so be it. At the same time, if he does stay, I'll be very happy as well because I think he's a great footballer. I think he has stagnated a little bit in the past 12 months. That will be because 
he probably needs actual game time to take him to the new level. But he remains a very good footballer, somewhere in limbo, I'd guess, between the first team and the academy team at the moment. If he does leave, he goes in my blessing, and I hope he gets first team football somewhere. I don't know which way this is going to go, but we'll see. Anyway, guys, that is the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed the second ever transfer target on my channel. If you want to see more of these, do get in the comments. Let me know who you want me to talk about tomorrow or the day after, depending on if we sign anyone or whatever video I'm going to do then. And I'm glad you enjoy it. Thank you for being absolutely lovely. If you haven't already as well, go and subscribe to my band channel there where you've got loads of epic post-rock stuff and really good music. And also click that link there to subscribe to my channel. Click any of these links here to watch yesterday's video or another one because I promise you'll enjoy it. Maybe, maybe not. Anyway, see you later, guys.